they are just about ready to go in Japan. The 2021 season for Nippon Professional Baseball begins on Friday, March 26th, with all 12 teams in action. This year, NPB reverts back to the normal schedule and format. 143 games, including interleague play from May 25th to June 13th. Six teams reach the postseason, three from each league. And the All-Star Series returns, taking place on Friday, July 16th at the MetLife Dome, and on Saturday, July 17th at Rakuten Seimei Park. The only big difference between this year and a normal season is that there will be a four-week break for the Olympics from the All-Star Game to August 12th, so the season will run well into November once again. The regular season goes on until the end of October. Japan Series is scheduled to begin on November 13th. This year I've decided to make separate videos for Central League and Pacific League in my season preview. Today I'm covering the Central League. Pacific League preview will be out very soon. This is how they ended the regular season last year. Giants at the top, followed by Tigers, Dragons, Bay Stars, Carp, and Swallows. There was no Climax Series in Central League last year, so the Giants went straight to the Japan Series, where they were swept in four games by the SoftBank Hawks. This year, the top half of the league will be in the postseason. I'll present these six teams in the order I think they'll finish, so it will not surprise you that I'm starting with the Yomiuri Giants. In 2020, the Giants dominated Central League, up until the final month when they started to lose that dominance but by that time they had built such a huge lead that it didn't matter. All their pitching is back. Most importantly, the ace, Tomoyuki Sugano, returns. After the 2020 season, everyone thought he was as good as gone, but Sugano turned down offers from Major League clubs, and he'll be back to lead the rotation. At 14-2, he had the most wins in all of NPB. 197 ERA was Central League's third best. In 2017 and 2018, he won the Sawamura Award as Japan's best pitcher. At 31 years old, he's still got time to win another one. 20-year-old Shosei Togo had a 276 ERA in his first full season last year. He is back as well, as is Angel Sanchez. He came over from the KBO last year and posted a 308 ERA in 15 starts. Plenty of good arms in the bullpen too. Kota Nakagawa appeared in relief 37 times with a 1.00 ERA and 15 holds. Yuhei Takanashi appeared 44 times, 21 holds, 193 ERA. And Ruby De La Rosa made 35 appearances, 256 ERA and 17 saves. Hitting was led by a trio of players. Third baseman Kazuma Okamoto hit 31 home runs to lead all Central League hitters. Outfielder Yoshihiro Maru hit 27 home runs and 31 doubles. And veteran shortstop Hayato Sakamoto added 19 homers. The Giants had the best offense in Central League last year, and not only did they bring back all their best weapons, they've added a few. Takayuki Kajitani comes over from Yokohama, where last year he was second in Central League batting with a 323 average. On base percentage 387, 19 home runs, 29 doubles, and 14 stolen bases. First baseman Justin Smoke comes over from MLB after a disappointing 2020 season. In 2019, he had a 342 on base percentage and 22 home runs. He's 34, and the 2020 season was only 60 games, so you'd expect a major league team to take a chance on him, but the Giants swooped in and offered more money than any major league club would have offered. Eric Thames is another one. Two years ago he hit 25 home runs with the Brewers, but last year with the Nationals he only managed three homers and 140 plate appearances. So the Giants bring back all their pitching from a staff that gave up the fewest runs in Central League last year. They scored the most runs in the league. All the best hitters from that lineup are back, and they've added a few more. Unless something goes seriously wrong with this team, the Giants will be Central League champions for a third straight season. Next up, the Hanshin Tigers. They ended up second in Central League last year, as expected but didn't finish anywhere near the top as they had hoped. Pitching was the team's strength in 2020, led by Yuki Nishi. He won 11 games and put up the league's fourth best ERA at 226. Koyo Aoyagi had a good 336 ERA, though he finished with a losing record. Joining the rotation this year is Raul Alcantara, the KBO wins leader a year ago. His KBO numbers were very similar to Angel Sanchez's numbers in the KBO before he joined the Giants last year. If Alcantara puts up numbers in NPB similar to what Sanchez did last year, he'll be a great addition to the Tigers' rotation. Robert Suarez was Central League's top closer with 25 saves and a 2.24 ERA in 51 appearances. Suguru Iwazaki came out 41 times, ERA 182, with 17 holds. The Tigers were fourth in the league in runs scored. Offensive leader was Yusuke Oyama, who slugged 560 and had the second highest home run total at 28. Koji Chikamoto had a 3.44 on-base percentage, stole a league-leading 31 bases, and hit five triples. Jerry Sands came over from the KBO and hit 19 home runs in his first NPB season. And now the Tigers are hoping that another ex-KBO slugger can provide an even bigger boost to their offense. Mel Rojas Jr. had one of the greatest seasons ever in the KBO last year, with 47 home runs and a 680 slugging, 
earning him the league MVP award. Hanshin was the second place team in 2020. In the offseason, they let go of a couple underperforming imports and replaced them with the best pitcher and hitter from the KBO. If the new imports meet their expectations, this should be an improved team in 2021. Hiroshima Carp are next. After winning three straight Central League titles from 2016 to 2018, the Carp just missed out on the postseason in 2019. Last year, they were nowhere near contention, finishing 13 games out of first. Hitting was not a problem. They had the second highest scoring offense. Seiya Suzuki was one of the league's best hitters, with a 409 on base percentage and 25 home runs. Second baseman Ryosuke Kikuchi put up decent hitting numbers, but was best known for his defense, playing 106 games on the field without committing a single error. Shota Dobayashi was another good hitter, 350 on base percentage, 14 home runs, 17 stolen bases. Pitching was their problem, allowing the second most runs in the league, but there was one major bright spot. Masato Morishita won the Rookie of the Year award after going 10-3 with the league's second best ERA, 191, and striking out 124 and 122 innings. Haren Kuryu was another good starter, going 8-6, ERA at 296. But the one who was supposed to be the team's ace was Daichi Osera. His ERA was 441 through 11 games, then missed the second half of the season with an elbow injury. Hieronimo Franzua was the best in the bullpen. 53 appearances, 19 saves, 7 holds, 245 ERA, and 10.1 strikeouts per night. But other than him, there weren't many good relievers. Atsuya Horie led the team in holds with 17, but in 52 games his ERA was over 4. So the Carp need a rebound from Osera, which I think they'll get. Not sure if he'll get back to where he was a couple years ago, but I think he'll be better than last year. If the team keeps doing what they did last year offensively, and gets more out of their bullpen, they'll be able to return to the postseason this year. And now for the teams that I have missing the postseason. The Chunichi Dragons finished third in 2020 and were in second for a while during the last month of the season. Five games over 500 despite having the league's lowest scoring offense. Yohei Oshima was their top hitter. He batted 316, ranking fourth in Central League, and also stole 16 bases. Shuhei Takahashi is another good hitter, batting 305. Dayan Vicieto led the team with just 17 home runs. He hit 26 home runs in 2018, but has hit fewer than 20 in the last two seasons. The Dragons need Vicieto to get his home run total up and see some improvement from young hitters, because they did not make any big signings this offseason. If the Dragons are going to win, it's most likely going to be because of their pitching. Yudai Ono is the reigning Sawamura Award winner. He was the ultimate do-it-yourself pitcher, with 10 complete games and 6 shutouts, winning 11 games, averaging 7 innings per start and a strikeout per inning, and topped the league with a 182 ERA. Koji Fukutani had a 264 ERA and 14 starts and 92 innings, and Yuya Yanagi started 15 games, ERA 360. If it comes down to the late innings, the Dragons are in good hands. Daisuke Sobue made 54 appearances, ERA 179, and ranked second with 28 holds. Rydell Martinez appeared 40 times, ERA 113, with 21 saves. The Dragons will have no problem winning when Ono is on the mound, but a lack of depth in the rotation and the absence of a good power hitter will keep them from reaching the postseason once again. The Yokohama DNA Bay Stars were third in runs scored and runs allowed last season, but fourth in the standings, three and a half behind Chunichi. Keita Sano won the Central League batting title with a 328 average, on base percentage 395 with 20 home runs. Toshiro Miyazaki hit 301 and hit 14 homers. Neftali Soto was the team's home run leader with 25. Good, but down from 43 the year before. In fact, all his offensive stats have been declining the last couple seasons. Kajitani left the team during the offseason to sign with the Giants, as I already mentioned. His loss could be more than made up for by a healthy Tyler Austin. Austin slugged 605 with 20 home runs and only 65 games. If he can hit like that for 140 games, the Bay Stars could have the highest scoring offense in the league. Shinichi Onuki won 10 games to lead all Bay Stars pitchers, ERA at 253. Kentaro Taira carried a 227 ERA through 14 starts. Shota Imanaga only made 9 starts, ERA 323. In 2019, he posted a 291 ERA and was second in Central League in both wins and strikeouts. Kazuki Mishima led the team with 18 saves, ERA 245 and 48 appearances. Kenta Ishida made 50 appearances, ERA 253 with 25 holds. Yasuaki Yamasaki was their top reliever in 2019, with 30 saves and a 195 ERA in 61 games. But last year his ERA shot up to 568 in 40 games. Starting pitcher Imanaga and relief pitcher Yamasaki are both in their late 20s, so they might be able to get back to their 2019 form. If they can do that, and Austin can hit like he did last year for a full season, this could be a postseason team. 
The Tokyo Yakult Swallows were last out of the six teams in Central League last year. 25 games out of first, 12 games out of fifth, second from the bottom in runs scored, and they allowed the most runs. Though the offense was bad, they did have some good individual hitters. 21-year-old Munetaka Murakami was the best of them. The leader in on-base percentage, 427, and slugging, 585, 28 home runs, and 30 doubles. Noriaoki had the league's third best batting average, 317, and was right behind Murakami in on-base percentage, 424, and slugging, 557. However, at age 39, he can't be expected to duplicate those numbers ever again. One player they do expect more from this year is 28-year-old second baseman Tetsuto Yamada, one of the best hitters in the past decade. In 2019, he had a 401 on on-base percentage, hit 35 home runs, 35 doubles, and stole 33 bases. But he struggled last year, on-base percentage 346, with only 12 homers and 8 stolen bases in 94 games. If the Swallows are going to improve offensively, they'll need him to bounce back. Yasuhiro Ogawa went 10-8 last year, the only starting pitcher with a winning record, and he threw a no-hitter, but ended the season with a 461 ERA. Albert Suarez put up a 267 ERA, but that was in just 12 games, 67 and a third innings. Noboru Shimizu led the league in holds with 30, but his ERA was a little high at 354 and 52 appearances. And they've got a reliable closer in Taichi Ishiyama, 44 games, 201 ERA and 20 saves. The offense will be better, led by Yamada's rebound and Murakami's continued development, but they will still have the Central League's worst pitching, and therefore, the worst record. In summary, the Giants were already the best team and they got better during the offseason. They'll be first again. Hanjin also got better, but not enough to catch the Giants. Carp look like they'll get the last spot in the postseason. Dragons will be fourth, led by the league's best starting pitcher, but until they get some weapons on offense, they won't be close in the postseason race. Bay Stars are fifth, but if everything goes right, they could be as high as third. Swallows are last, a little better than last year, but not enough to get out of the cellar. And that's it. Let me know if I left anything out. Pacific League Preview will be out soon. That's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!